It's Laurie from Quick Scrap Craft, and today I'm bringing you part one of two of my all time favorite books. And this is a list of 12 books that, when I read them for the first time, I was like, wow, this is so amazing. And I actually own them all, and they're on my bookshelf upstairs so everyone can see them. I have two bookshelves, an A and a B. Um, and I just thought I would share some of them with you. And of course, once I finish both of these parts of the videos, I will probably end up saying, oh wait, but this other book was, is really good too. It's also one of my all time favorites. So maybe they'll end up being a part three, but for right now, I'm gonna stick with just two parts. And in this first video, I'm going to do the six, the first six books that are my all time favorites. And really these are in no particular order. I'm just about adding them six and six so that it's easier to digest for you. So the first book is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This book definitely started my love affair with Oscar Wilde. I am a big fan of his. And I actually uh, dated someone for a very short period of time who told me that Oscar Wilde was weird. And I was like, yeah, you're not gonna last very long with me. So I just thought that the whole story of how the guy has this portrait of him and like he's gonna stay really young and the image starts to age and get older it's kind of creepy um, and it does really ask a good question about like what would you do to prolong your life and always be handsome or good-looking and is it really worth it um, I think I read this book I don't know, maybe in high school, maybe eighth grade, ninth grade, I'm not sure. Or it could have been part of a, a class that I had to read it for. But anyway, it's not very long. If you've never read it before, I would highly recommend it. Okay, Dubliners by James Joyce. This is actually a collection of stories. So it's not a full-blown novel. And I like this because, <laughs> I mean, I've read The Portrait of the Artist as a young man, and I also really enjoy that book. Maybe that one should be on the list as well. I have tried to read other Joyce and it's just not happening. I tried to read Ulysses in college and I was like, what? Um, so yeah, anytime you have like a book and you also have to have like a translated, a translation piece nearby, it's just not gonna happen. But Dubliners I think is a really uh, accessible way to read Joyce because uh, the story, the chapters are, sh the stories are short. It's not a, a long drawn out thing. Um, and they're really interesting. And I really just enjoyed uh, the characters and the place. I went through a, a huge period of time, um, late high school, beginning of college, where I was like obsessed with all things Ireland. And I wanted to study abroad there. Um, I thought Irish men were really hot. <laughs> um, there's also a movie where Ewan McGregor plays James Joyce. Um, and you get to see his booty, so that's kind of nice as well. But that wasn't the, that wasn't the reason. That movie was not the reason why I enjoyed this book. I just enjoyed this book on its own. My next one, speaking of authors abroad, Maeve Binchy's Circle of Friends. Now, I kind of don't think I've read anything else by her, but I loved Circle of Friends, and I read it in high school, and then I saw the movie version. And I should also do a video about books to movie and what some of my favorites are. This movie was not one of my favorites. It was fine, but they changed the ending. And oh, it just like broke my heart when they did that because the ending of the book is so good. So yes, it's a big one, but it's it's definitely worth it. And it's the story of um, a girl who's, you know, kind of chubby. Uh, she's played by um, Minnie Driver in the movie and she kind of like falls in love with this guy. She's, you know, part of a group of people and she's not the most beautiful. And it's sort of like her relationship with this guy that she has a crush on and how he kind of like uses her and leads her on. Um, and how what she comes to learn about herself and her own self-worth. So anyway, um, you know, lots of the, the traditional like miscommunications in the story among among everybody. And so it's how this this girl um, is kind of trying to find her place among her friends and among society. I am counting all of these books as one. It's the Lord of the Rings. Well, trilogy, I have The Hobbit in here as well. Um, I went through a period where I would reread every Lord of the Rings book once a year. 
And then it got to be a little much because there, of course, are other books that I would also like to be reading. And the Lord of the Rings books, yeah, they can take a little bit of time. They get, um, they're long, <laughs> they're long books. And I think these paperback versions are actually um, very small print. They're really crackly in here. It's been a while since I've taken them out. So I'll just leave them in the box. But um, you don't have to read The Hobbit. The Hobbit's kind of eh. But these three books I thought were amazing. Obviously I saw the movies, which I loved. Um, the Fellowship of the Ring, like, changed my life <laughs> in college. My friend and I were so obsessed with it. And then I went back and I read the books and I just love the books as well. Um, so I would highly recommend reading these books by Tolkien because they're so good. Um, and watching the movies too. It's kind of fun to see how they're adapted and how the director, how Peter Jackson, um, took all of this stuff and fit it into the movies. Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar is another one of my all-time favorite books. I believe I read this, did I read it in college or high school? I can't remember. I think I read it in college and at the time that I read it, um, the girl in the book is uh, doing an internship with a magazine. She's in New York and I was at the time trying to get a New York internship with a magazine. So I kind of like felt there was a parallel there and not to say that I was like depressed or whatever during my college years, but you know, I was a little, I was a little emo. Maybe I was a little emo before there was emo, right? Um, but I really just, just the character resonated with me and the things that she was going through and thinking about kind of felt like I was also at that same point in my life uh, trying to figure out the future and where you belong and what you should be doing. Um, so I really, really enjoyed this book. I would highly recommend it. Okay, and the last one for this part one video of my all-time favorite books is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Dumas? Dumas. I don't know. And I don't care because it's an amazing book. It's a little bit long, but I really, really loved it. I loved the story. I loved the, the themes of like forgiveness and revenge and the movie version. They changed stuff in it and it was, it was no good. No good. Um, you know, it, it was fine. But if you've seen the movie version, I would highly recommend reading the book. If you haven't read the book yet, definitely read the book. Maybe steer clear of the movie unless you're willing to be slightly disappointed. Um, but yeah, I really, really liked this one. And I actually think that Relevant Magazine listed the movie as, or somebody, uh, Relevant Magazine had a whole post about um, like the best Christian movies of all time. So while this is not specifically a Christian book, it has themes that are important to the religion in it. You could look at this book and say like, okay, this is a way to live your life, right? Um, and so I think, I don't think Relevant Magazine had this listed, but someone in the comments recommended this. Uh, and I would totally agree. And even like Lord of the Rings, some of Tolkien stuff has those same themes as well, which is really cool. Um, but I, I would highly recommend reading the book instead of watching the movie. Okay, so that's part one of the top all-time favorite books. I'm gonna come at you with part two uh, in just a few days. So definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that. And let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite books of all time are. Maybe if I haven't read them, I should read them. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like, and I'll see you guys next time. Happy reading.